Hello, and welcome to Lecture 3 of Math 2R03. Uh, in today's lecture, we're going to be looking at subspaces. So in the last lecture, we reviewed what a vector space is. A subspace is basically uh, something sitting inside of a vector space that also has the properties of a vector space. Now, if you take in Math 1B03, we talked about subspaces, and we probably went through some of these details. But we're going to redo them again in today's lecture. And the, the particular thing that we're going to highlight is how do you check whether a particular subset is a subspace or not. And at the end of today's lecture, we're going to talk uh, about how we take sums of subspaces to make larger subspaces. So that's our goal for today's uh, lecture. So let's uh, get started, and we're going to jump in right away with the definition of what it means for something to be a subspace. So we start with V being a vector space. And a subset, okay, so I mean it's just a subcollection of objects inside of V is a subspace of V if this U is also a vector space with the same scalar multiplication and addition of V. So with the same scalar multiplication and addition uh, sorry it should be yeah scalar multiplication and addition of v so in some sense it inherits the structure the operations from the larger set v but if we restrict ourselves to the smaller set it still has all the properties of a vector space Okay. Now, these things do exist, and in fact, if you take any uh, vector space, it has two subspaces, which are usually called the trivial subspaces. Right? We saw that last time that the set containing just zero is a vector space. So if we take our larger vector space V and just consider the zero element, it is an example of a subspace, and V is a subset. V is also a subset of itself, right? So, and V, of course, is a vector space. So the zero, the uh, zero vector space, and the whole vector space itself are subspaces, uh, subspaces of V. Now, in some sense, these are uninteresting subspaces because every vector space has these. So as we go through the course, we're more interested in things that are sitting between the uh, whole space and containing the zero uh, subspace. So these are called the trivial subspaces because every vector space has these subspaces. Okay. So here, I think it's kind of one of the more, probably the most important result that you're going to see in today's lecture is a theorem here, which describes allows you to characterize when you see whether you determine whether a subset is a subspace or not. If we go up to the definition, it would look like you've given a sub, uh, somebody gives you a, a subset and asks you, is this a subspace? You would have to check all seven of those criteria that we talked about in the last lecture. But what the following theorem is saying is, no, you don't have to check all the criteria, and you only have to check these three criteria. And they're very simple to check. So it says that use a subspace if and only if the zero element belongs to your subset. If you take two elements, u and v, then u plus v is also in used, uh, u. So this is closure under addition. Okay, and then the second, third statement says that if you take any vector inside of u and any constant in your field, then c times u is also inside of u, the big U. So this is closure under scalar multiplication. Okay, and so we'll prove this. Okay, now this is an if and only if statement. Okay, so this is an if and only if statement. So what this means is we have two things to prove. We have to prove that if u is a subspace, then these three criterion are true. And then we have to show that if we have these three criterion about u, then u is also a subspace of v. Okay, now one direction is kind of straightforward, is that if u is a subspace, that means it is a vector space. And so, let me write that down. 
So if u is a subspace, it is a vector space, so it satisfies all of those properties we talked about last class. And it's in particular, it has to satisfy 1, 2, and 3, right? Because all of these three conditions are properties that a vector space has to have. A vector space has to have 0, vector space has to be closed under addition, and a vector space has to be closed under scalar multiplication. So one direction is easy. If you're a subspace, you have to have these three properties. The real work comes in showing the other direction. We have to show that if u satisfies all the axioms of a vector space, uh, sorry, we need to show that if u satisfies all the axioms of a vector space. Okay, so let me give myself some more room here so I can write some more things here. So what do we have to note? Well, note that there's a bunch of properties of a vector space that it doesn't really matter if we're talking about elements inside of U or elements inside of V. These will always hold. So I'm writing, right, let me write these all out for a sec and we'll talk about it. So these are a big number of the axioms that we, we have to have in our vector space. Okay, so all of these criteria, these hold for all elements uh, inside of V, so they definitely hold for all elements inside of U. Okay, so hold for all elements in V, including those in U. So these elements, if we, if these elements were inside of U, they're also inside of V, and so they would satisfy all of these particular properties. So we see that we actually get a whole whack of the axioms we need to check right away just by making this observation. So then we have to say, well, we have to kind of fill in the missing axioms, right? And one of the missing axioms is that an, uh, there's an additive identity, right? But that's actually one of the given conditions, right? So U has an additive, oh, let me give myself some more room here so you can see what I'm doing. So U has an additive identity by one. That's one of the hypotheses. So it has a, it has a zero element. Uh, what else can we have? Well, two and three imply that U has a uh, scalar addition, or sorry, scalar multiplication and addition. So that's one of the properties that a vector space has to have. And there's actually only one axiom that we, hasn't been covered by what we've talked about before, which is about additive inverses, that everything has to have an additive inverse. Okay, But by the fact three that it's closed under scalar multiplication, is that we have that if u is in u, then negative one times u is inside of u. But we proved last time that when you take a vector and you multiply it by negative one, you get the additive inverse of that vector. So all additive inverses also in U. Okay, so now we, if you go back to uh, chapter uh, uh, previous section and you look at the list of axioms, we've now checked that all the axioms uh, for a vector space are satisfied by U. And, the and in particular, we need statements one, two, and three to kind of allow us to make sure that all the, proper all the properties of a vector space are satisfied. Okay. Now we'll see after the after the break how we use this uh, result in practice to check whether a subset is a subspace or not. Okay, so I'll put this back over here, and we'll pause for a moment, and I'll see you in part two of today's lecture.